Hello class, this is chapter 9, Gender and Sexuality. Nature or Nurture? Let's start off with the female and male representation of deity by Joseph Campbell. The Lord's Prayer begins, Our Father, which art in heaven. Yeah. Could it have begun, Our Mother? This is a metaphorical image. This is a symbolic image. And to make the point that it's not your father, your physical father, we have our father who art in heaven. But heaven again is a symbolic idea. Where it would heaven be? It is no place. All of the references of uh, religious and mythological images are to planes of consciousness or fields of experience potentially in the human spirit. And these are to evoke uh, attitudes and experiences that are appropriate to a meditation on the mystery of the source of your own being, I would say. So there have been systems of religion where the mother is the prime parent, the source, and she's really a more um, immediate parent than the father because one is born from the mother yeah. And then the first experience of any infant is the mother. So that the image of woman is the image of the world. You might say that mythology is simply a translation of the world into a mother image. We talk of Mother Earth and so forth. But what happened along the way, Joe, to this reverence that in primitive societies was directed toward the goddess figure, the great goddess, the Mother Earth. What happened to that? That comes in primarily with agriculture and the agricultural societies. Fertility and all of that? It has to do with the Earth. The, the human woman does give birth as the Earth gives birth to the, uh, the plants. She gives nourishment as the plants do. So woman magic and Earth magic are the same. They are related. And uh, the personification, then, of this energy which gives birth to forms and nourishes forms is probably female. And so it is in the agricultural world of ancient uh, Mesopotamia, the Egyptian Nile, but also in the earlier planting culture systems that the uh, the goddess is the mythic form that is dominant because of this obvious perception of creation issue that's right and when you have a goddess as the uh, creator it's her own very body that is the universe. She is identical with the universe. And in Egypt, uh, you have the, the mother heavens, Newt, the goddess Newt, who's represented as the whole heavenly sphere. So it would be natural for people trying to explain the wonders of the universe to look to the female figure as the explanation for what they saw in their own lives. Not only that, but then when you move to a philosophical point of view, the female represents what uh, in the Kantian terminology we call the forms of sensibility. The female represents time and space itself. She is time and space. And the mystery beyond her is beyond pairs of opposites. So it isn't male and it isn't female. It neither is nor isn't. But everything is within her so that the gods are her children. Everything you can think of, everything you can see, is the uh, production of the goddess. When Yahweh creates, he creates of the earth and breathes his life into it. He's not there. She's there. Your body is her body. And there's that kind of identity. Well, that's why I'm not so sure that the future of the race and the salvation of the journey is in space. I think it is well right here on earth, in the body, in the womb of all of our being. 
Well, it certainly is. I mean, when you go out into space, what you're carrying is your body, and if that hasn't been transformed, space won't transform it for you. But thinking about space may help you. What these pages opened to me was the vision of a universe of unimaginable magnitude and inconceivable violence. Billions upon billions, literally, of roaring thermonuclear furnaces scattering from each other. Each thermonuclear furnace being a star, and our sun among them. Many of them actually blowing themselves to pieces, littering the outermost reaches of space with dust and gas, out of which new stars with circling planets are being born right now. And then from still more remote distances beyond all these, there come murmurs, microwaves, which are echoes of the greatest cataclysmic explosion of all, namely the Big Bang of creation, which according to recent reckonings must have occurred some 18 billion years ago. That's where we are, kiddo. And uh, to realize that, you realize how really important you are, you know, one little micro bit in this great magnitude. And then out of that must come the experience that you and that are in some sense one and uh, you partake of all of that. And it begins here. It begins here. It does begin here, right in who we are. And that's why learning about what it means to be human and who we are as a human family across the planet and why we have different cultures and why we look so different, what sexuality is, um, what gender is, allows us to construct our world. Hello, cat class. Today we're going to look at, uh, again, uh, Section Gender, Chapter 9. The Creation of Gender. As we've looked at the Barrow Model, economy, the material support of life, is usually the core that people organize around. So the social structure is organized around economic goals. And the superstructure is then holds that all together with the beliefs, attitudes, and values that people adopt to be in that culture. In the United States, economy is the core, and it sets up social, social stratification. That's why we have class, race, and gender stratified terms. Advertising is key in our economy. It is the arm of the economy that um, artificially promotes consumption, artificially provides the need for consumption. And advertising in our, in our, our economy has always objectified women. By that I mean using parts of their body as objects to get attention to sell products. This is not our nature. We are not naturally excited by a woman's breasts. In fact, the films that I've shown already showed plenty of indigenous groups with women with naked breasts and people weren't going crazy. It is the control, the patriarchal control of the identity of the feminine that gives us pornography, that gives us the objectification of women, that, give us, that gives us also the abuse against women that we see in our culture. 